Like, the person he was talking to was me the whole time. I wasn't talking hey. to anybody. Like, What's I got concerned? daughters of my own. You, you know? have daughters of your own? Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're, you're too slow, Dave. You're too slow. Would you agree that this is you? No. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Not the wrong guy, buddy. I don't know what you're yeah, doing. What's good, man? What's up? You're what's not, up? There's no, another one playing, right you're here. Playing no, you're not playing no homie game with me. You're not playing no. Got one again right here. We often hear about child predators, and it's a terrifying thought that someone out there could be targeting little kids. But what happens when these predators are caught by the law enforcement? Do they give up and accept their punishment? Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So in today's video, we will take a closer look at some instances where child predators run from the police. What happens next is something you won't want to miss. Beginning today's show, our first case takes us to a Walmart in Onalaska, Wisconsin. On May 22, 2021, a man touched a 10-year-old girl inappropriately after following her through multiple aisles in the store. As per the victim, the man grabbed her from behind and then rubbed up against her. After the girl told her mom what had happened, the latter immediately confronted the man. However, after hearing her accusation, he reportedly fled the store and left in a pickup truck. When a complaint was filed, the police jumped into action and acquired surveillance video from Walmart. The cops reviewed footage which showed the mother chasing the suspect out of the store, who then drove away in a pickup. To get further evidence, on May 25th, the cops again reviewed surveillance video from the subway store inside Walmart. The footage showed the suspect purchasing food around 2 p.m. Although Subway provided a receipt for the transaction, the name of the debit card used was not included. So, the authorities served Subway with a subpoena for records to obtain video and debit card information. After due investigation, the man in question was found to be a 30-year-old male named Jose Aman. Five months later, the cops showed up at Aman's job at a lacrosse restaurant with evidence that he had been at Walmart in May and asked one of his co-workers to call him. As Aman approached the officers, one of them immediately informed him that he was a suspect, but Aman played the fool card as if he had no idea what the cop was talking about. The cop then asked him if he had been to the Walmart in Onalaska, to which Aman replied with a simple, sometimes. The cop informed Aman about receiving a complaint from a parent of a young girl in Onalaska and asked him whether it rang a bell. However, Aman replied with a firm no. Even though the cop said they had video footage of him being chased out of Walmart by a woman, he kept denying the whole thing. Amon tried to play the law game, but it looked like the officer came prepared for it as he pulled up Amon's photo and asked if it was him. Of course, Amon denied it. Man, the guy can lie. Not to mention the fact that the photo was from the surveillance footage and Amon can be seen in it plain as day. The cop then showed a picture of his pickup truck caught in the camera, and to no one's surprise, the Amon once again rejected, saying his vehicle didn't have a topper on it. Amon lied about not being at Walmart, but what he clearly failed to understand is that he messed up big time because he bought a Subway sandwich there. Even if he tried to deny being there, the cops had the receipt to prove his purchase. The cop then went on to explain the reported incident to Amon. At first, Amon dismissed this with a smirk, but the cop wasn't so easily fooled. In fact, he had reviewed the security footage and found something quite interesting. It turns out that the suspect had used Amon's debit card to purchase a sub sandwich just before the incident occurred. Looks like Aman's little plan wasn't so foolproof after all. Even after getting caught red-handed, Aman quickly came up with a lie to get out of the mess. When the cop confronted him with the evidence, he tried to shift the blame, asking if someone else had used his debit card. But the cop was having none of that and shut him down. The details of Aman's movements were laid out in plain sight. He had walked into the store through the vestibule, and made his way to Subway to grab some food. With so much evidence against him, the cop couldn't help but raise an eyebrow, wondering if Amon really expected him to believe that someone else had used his debit card. At this moment, he knew he had messed up. He realized the police had evidence of his presence at the crime scene, along with the proof of his purchases. The cherry on top was that he had been caught lying to the cops on camera. At that instant, there was only one foolish thing a guilty person could do. When the cop told Ammon to turn around and put his hands behind his back, he bolted out of the restaurant and down an alley. Even though the cop repeatedly called him to stop, he kept running down the street. 
Luckily, Amon didn't get too far before he was tackled to the ground by the cops and was arrested. Yeah, right. After all that he has done, he surely needs all the help he can get. Groping a child lying to the cops and now resisting an arrest, Amon's crimes just kept piling up, didn't they? Running from the cops may seem like a wild adventure, but the legal aftermath is a total bummer. Resisting an arrest is a misdemeanor that can get you fined up to $10,000, jailed for up to nine months or both. And if a law enforcement officer is injured while resisting or obstructing, the charge becomes a felony. After being arrested, Amman appeared in court and was charged with first-degree sexual assault of a girl under the age 13 and misdemeanor resisting an officer. If found guilty, he'll be in for a long haul as a Class B felony. A conviction for sexual contact with a minor can mean up to 60 years in prison. Let's hope families out there feel relieved knowing that predators like Amon can get caught red-handed. Talking about predators in Walmart, let's get on with the next case where the child predator takes it up a notch by not just touching little girls, but also taking their inappropriate pictures. But before that, please hit the like button and help us in creating more awareness by showing you these important societal cases. On June 9, 2023, Staff at a Georgia Walmart contacted the Suwon police concerning a man reportedly creeping on young girls. He had allegedly touched the butts of two customers and took their upskirt photos. The man, later identified as 33-year-old Gary Moultrie, was revealed to be a registered sex offender as well. The store security team pulled up surveillance footage for the cops, showing how Moultrie was just roaming around the store, snapping upskirt photos and touching girls' butts. Moultrie was recognized by staff in the store one day earlier, where he had again been allegedly seen touching another nine-year-old young girl's bottom. The staff informed the cops of the same and how the guy had slipped away before they could nab him. And now here he was again, back at it. While the cops were watching the surveillance footage, they caught Moultrie red-handed, snapping inappropriate pics, not once, but twice. That's when they knew they had to do something about it. And when they finally closed in on him, what did he do? That's right, he bolted, turning this whole scene into a wild chase that ended in the garden center. When one of the cops finally cornered Moultrie in the garden center, he tried to distract her by pretending his daughter needed help. He pointed frantically towards the parking lot, shouting about his daughter needing assistance, probably thinking that the cops during the chase didn't get a chance to properly identify him, and using this trick, he might get away. Unfortunately for him, the cop was not fooled. When the cop did momentarily sidetrack, Moultrie made a break for it once more. With the cop hot on his heels, he once again dashed back into the Walmart. The cops eventually had to use a taser on him to take him down. But even when apprehended, Moultrie didn't back down so easily and to cover up his crime started to smash his cell phone while the cops were trying to put him in handcuffs. Thankfully, the cops were able to retrieve his cell phone. Not that they lacked evidence as everything was already captured in the store's CCTV footage earlier on. The cops took away his phone and wallet before rolling him over to search his body. After the due procedure, Moultrie was then taken to the police car and later to jail after being booked for various misdemeanor and felony charges, including willful obstruction, evidence tampering, and sexual battery for his alleged perverted Walmart activities. But wait, there's more. Turns out back in 2016, Moultrie got nailed with charges like child molestation, statutory rape, and trying to lure a kid for indecent purposes in DeKalb County. And he's been on Georgia's sex offender list since May 2020. Moultrie may have escaped justice once, but it's highly likely he would escape from this one. For all our sakes, let's hope it takes a considerable time before he tastes freedom again. All thanks to the Walmart store staff and the cops. But it's not just the cops who are on the lookout for such vile criminals. Sometimes it's your own friendly neighborhood predator catchers, too, who get the job done. One such person is YouTuber Musa Harris, also known as the Luzerne County Predator Catcher. And his latest catch is this 55-year-old predator. Musa began chatting with the 55-year-old alleged predator on Telegram while pretending to be a 15-year-old girl and persuaded him for a meetup in order to catch him red-handed. On the agreed day, Harris approached the predator by the Susquehanna River, pretending to ask for a lighter, and began talking to him. As they spoke, the man introduced himself as Brian, not the one to beat around the bush, Musa quickly got to the point and told the man that he was the one who had been posing as a 15-year-old and chatting with him for the past month. Surprisingly, the man denied talking to anybody and said he was simply headed to work. Harris, however, knew that he was lying. What are you here for? What am I looking for? I said, what are you here for? Oh, I'm headed to Edwardsville. Come here, let me talk to you for a second right here. 
Let's have a seat. Like, the person he was talking to was me the whole time. I wasn't talking to anybody. I'm serious. I'm headed to work. I work at Ollie's. Listen, cut it, cut it out. I am the, the 15 year old that you're supposed to be meeting right now. I'm that person. I was the one I was talking the whole time. Now we're gonna, we, we gonna start this over again? Do you wanna start this over or you wanna keep continue to lie? I'm going to work. So you wanna continue to lie? Musa then asked whether his name was Dave. And in that instant, the man seemed to realize that he was caught in a trap. Just hear how he quaked when threatened with a police call. If that's not a sign of a guilty person, then what is? Is it Dave? Um, I don't know. You don't know what, you, so should I call the police then? No. Should I call the police then? You don't know what I'm talking about then? You don't know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? So if I show the police what I have, you think they, they believe, um, they believe you? Listen, they're like, I was kind of worried. To you, what you was getting worried about? Did you keep your hands no. so I can see them now? No. I'm, I'm serious, I'm not. Um, what, you, what you was worried about? Her. Her about what? Just like the way she talks. Like how? Just like it's concerning. Like What's I got concerning? daughters of my own. You, you know? have daughters of your own? Yeah, right. Good luck playing the doting father card. The predator or Dave tried his best to persuade Musa that he got the wrong guy, but this wasn't the first rodeo for Musa, and he knew all too well the kind of person he was dealing with. He then confronts the man about his predatory behavior and even makes him read the messages exchanged between the two. She's talking. She told me she was 16. No, she said almost 16. All right. Yeah. And then I said, no, I'm, I'm over 18. You know, that, that's, that can't happen. So why you continue to um, keep messaging her every morning? Hey, um, Just hey, my little morning. girl. Hey, my little girl and everything like this. I said, why, she, is she a virgin and stuff like this? These are things that you ask um, strange um, kids around 15 years old. Good morning, good morning, beautiful lady. How are you? I'm good, how are you doing today, sunshine? I said, what does it matter? You don't sound okay. I am okay. Okay, don't make me come to your house. Yeah, what will you do if you come over? I'm listening. What you doing? That is not gonna help you. You can talk to me and that's gonna help you. Deleting it, I already took all the screenshots of everything. Right. So that's not gonna help. Do you feel that you did something wrong today? No. No? Wow, look at the nerve on that guy. Guilty and in denial. But deep down he knew this wasn't something he could escape from so he started deleting the messages. But Musa was way ahead of him and informed him of the screenshots. Cornered badly, the man did what any predator would do. That's right, ran like his life depended on it. Where you going at? Why are you walking off to so fast? Hey. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow. Come on, top, top right. You're too slow, Dave. You're too slow, Dave. No, you're fleeting. You enticed this. I'm enticed this? How many times you asked to meet up? With Musa hot on his trail, the man quickly decided to pick up the pace and started to jog up a steep hill. After running out of escape options, Dave decided to jump into the Susquehanna River. Given his confidence when he dived in, one might think he could swim across the river. However, there was a tiny flaw in the man's escape plan. He said he couldn't swim, but who knows, that might be another one of his lies. Get the f Come back. Then get your ass back over here then, man. Yeah. Yo, get the f out of there. Yo, you tripping. Yo. Concerned about his well-being, Musa began to coax the man to come out of the river, telling him that the cops were not coming for him. Musa even agreed to put away his phone, but the man didn't get out of the river. 
The police ain't gonna do nothing to you, bruh. They ain't even over this way. Yo. Yo, listen, listen. Oh. You better. They come back there. They, they come back there. I turn it back towards me. All right? All right? Look, 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 look. Look. Fair. Dave, come talk to me. You want me to come in with you? All right, I'll do away with the phone. Come back. Come back, man. Come on. You have kids. You have kids, bro. Get over here. Do you want your kids to see you in a, in a high, look, 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 in a goddamn river? Come on, come on out of there. So why would you be in there then? Then come over then. You want me to come in after you? Musa tried his best to persuade Dave to come out of the river, but suddenly the guy made a bold move and decided to swim all the way across the river. That's when Harris reached his breaking point and walked away from the river to finally call the cops. Oh, this mother... Dave! I'm leaving you alone there, bro. I'm out of here. Peace out. Peace out. I'm done. I'm not f***ing with you, man. You want to go all that river. I ain't going in no river. Man, I'm out of here. All right? I'm going to go. You, Dave. You're f***ing crazy. You're crazy, Dave. As soon as the police arrived, Musa and the officers rushed back to the spot where the man had plunged into the river. But to their surprise, there was no one in sight. They searched the area, wondering where the man could have gone. Then they began to speculate that he might have slipped away while Musa was briefly away from the scene. I don't know where the f he went at. I think he came out. I don't know. I think he came out over here. I think he came out over there. Yeah, like when I went back up. Harris also gave all the details he had to the cops to help them catch that man. After conducting a search along with the police, the Wilkes-Barre City Fire Department also joined in. During the search, they discovered a wet shirt lying in the bushes near the riverbank. However, no other clues were found about the man's whereabouts. According to the investigators from the Wilkes-Barre City Fire Department, they eventually called off the search of the river as they believed that the predator may have already left the water. It's a concerning situation as the predator is still on the loose, but at least the investigation is ongoing, so there's hope he'll get caught someday. Bummer for Musa and all his hard work as that's not the outcome he was hoping for. However, that cannot be said for Musa's next case where he did manage to put away one child predator for good, and you will be shocked to find that this was no ordinary citizen but a police officer. On August 15th, 2020, Musa laid another trap for another child predator who called himself Paul, just like Dave, Paul thought he was going to meet a young teen at a store in Exeter, Pennsylvania, but instead gets greeted by Musa and his camera. What a surprise. When confronted, the man said that his name was Paul and he was there to meet some of his friends. After Musa explained to him the real reason for their meetup, all of a sudden the guy started yelling that his name was not Paul and he got the wrong guy. Caught red-handed and alarmed by several people, Paul immediately takes off in his truck. Hey, what's that? What are you here for? How you doing? What's your name? Paul. Paul? Yeah. What are you right here for? What's that? What you right here for, Paul? Me? Yeah. I'm here to meet some of my friends. It's here to meet. Here to meet your friends? Yeah, I'm here to get some turkey. I'm here to get a turkey and iced tea. Some cash. Why? Oh, don't, don't. Keep your hands where I can see them. Uh, who are you? Listen, I'm out here. I know what you're right here to do. I'm not here to do nothing. Listen, I'm here to get a turkey hill ice. You hit up one of my decoys already. No. Listen, yeah. buddy, you got the wrong guy. Buddy, Paul? No. My name is not Paul. You just say Paul. No. You just say your name Paul. My name's not Paul. You got the wrong guy, buddy. I don't know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, what's good, man? What's up? What's up? There's no, another one right you're not here. No, you're not playing no homie game with me. You're not playing no game. Got one again right here. You're not, not playing no game with me. Your way of here. To create awareness, Musa posted the video later on the internet, but little did he know he was in for quite a big surprise. Looks like Paul here was an ex-cop whose name was Leonard Galley and was kicked out of the service three years before for breaking several rules and other corrupt practices. 
Just hear what Musa has to say after learning who the predator really was. No, I didn't find that out until like after I caught him and came home and my phone started blowing up with like, yo, you know who that was? Do you know who that was, man? Like, I didn't have heard anything good about him. What's crazy is like, he's tra he's a trained officer that he trains other officers in combat and everything. I didn't know none of them. This guy's a like third degree black belt and everything. Like he trained, he used to train the other officers on self-defense and everything. I didn't even know that he was like this type of guy. Isn't it sad when the very people who swore to protect us end up as criminals, and that too of such grave kind? Anyway, the authorities reacted promptly when the case came to light, and after proper investigation, found out that Leonard was trying to court multiple young teenagers through dating apps using Paul as the fake name. He also sent several explicit pictures of himself to these teenagers to have a sexual relationship with them. I think the crazy thing is with, with the name Paul, that's the same name that he was using for, for that's the name that he was corresponding with the decoy with, with what he thought was the, the underage kid. Like that, that's the exact name that he was using. So when I pulled, when I came up to him, it was crazy that he used the same name. Then he's like, no, that's not my name. That's not my name, Paul. That's not my name. He just told me your name was Paul. Once I told him, I, like, I knew what he was there for and everything like that, and somebody from the neighborhood recognized who I was from my video, they was like, oh, man, you, you caught another one? I'm like, yeah, I got another one right here. And that's where he's like, man, I'm not with these homie gangs that's ready to pull right off. Leonard was later arrested and sentenced to one to two years in prison, followed by five years of probation. He used to run a Marshall studio for kids. Safe to say he can kiss goodbye to that as the judge also prohibited him from teaching or coaching of any kind as he is not allowed to attend any place where minors frequent. To add to it, he was also ordered to undergo sex therapy and continue the sexual offender program he is currently enrolled in. Now that's what you call a happy ending, right folks? Speaking of a happy ending, here's the next story where the cops, with help from a TikToker named Black Biden, nab a child predator as he tries to run from them. Our final case occurred in Long Beach, California, this February, when a man attempted to meet a 15-year-old boy and got caught all thanks to this guy on social media who goes by the name of Black Biden. And what he really does is trick creeps into thinking they're talking to a kid online. Then, he tells them to meet up and calls the cops as soon as they show up. He even records it all to show the cops grabbing the perp. This time, Black Biden posed as a 15-year-old boy online to lure the suspect in for a date at a fast food restaurant. The suspect, a 41-year-old man named Cody Lane Orero from Hawthorne, was seated in the restaurant when the cops approached him. He was told to put his phone on the table, raise his arms all the way up, and turn around. At first, he seemed like he was going to cooperate. But once the suspect got an idea that the supposed meeting was a trap, he did what all our other suspects had done before by attempting to flee the scene. However, he didn't expect a good Samaritan who would trip him out of nowhere and slow him down. After what seemed like a very short chase, they were able to get him on the ground. They quickly swiped his belongings away from his reach and restrained him, but the struggle was far from over as the suspect continuously tried to wiggle his way out of the cop's hold. If not for anything else, this guy is definitely going down for resisting an arrest. Thankfully, no one was hurt as the cops and the suspect continued to be locked in a tense struggle, but eventually they managed to wrestle him to the ground and slap handcuffs on him. Well, we don't need to answer that as this right here is as stupid as it gets. Soon enough, the backup arrived and then the cops emptied the suspect's pocket trying to find any sort of potential weapon before lifting him off the ground and escorting him toward a waiting police vehicle. Following yet another meticulous pat-down, they hauled him away in the car. The suspect, later identified as one Cody Lane Orero, from Hawthorne was arrested on suspicion of arranging a meeting with a minor for lewd purposes and one count of resisting a police officer, according to Allison Gallagher, executive communications officer for the Long Beach Police Department. Props to guys like Black Biden and Musa Harris for standing up for what's right. If anything, people like these truly give away that heroism comes in various forms and you don't have to necessarily carry a gun or a uniform to show that. Sometimes a little will, and a mere camera is all one needs to get the job done. That's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one.